I'm often asked whether I've changed my own breakfast habits in light of the research that we've done. Um, and actually, I've never been a, a breakfast consumer. I very, very rarely have breakfast, which was part of the reason I was interested in the research, because people had always told me, you should have breakfast, it's the most important meal of the day. So I sought out the literature on that topic and realised there was an opportunity to add to our understanding. Um, I can tell you, though, that based on the findings we have, I haven't changed my dietary habits, not because the findings necessarily support what I do, but just because I haven't implemented anything that we found into my own dietary habits, I seem to be um, quite fine just having a cup of coffee in the morning and don't feel any hunger pangs. I was aware for a, a long time that there was a lot of cross-sectional evidence showing that while the majority of people, my surveys show three quarters, two thirds of people do regularly have breakfast, the remainder regularly skip breakfast and uh, a fair proportion actually never have breakfast. So it was clearly a question that's relevant to everybody in terms of whether you should or shouldn't change your behaviour and, and have or not have breakfast. But also, when I seek out the literature on that topic, I found that there's very little causal evidence to support the common belief that people should have breakfast. So that seems to just be the kind of dogma amongst public opinion, when at the time there was very little, if none, in the way of causal evidence. So that prompted me to look at what aspects of energy balance had never been measured and then realised that in our lab here we were very well placed to add the final piece of the puzzle to produce a randomised control trial that looked at all aspects of energy balance in response to breakfast versus fasting. Well of course it's a great honour and having seen the list of previous winners even more so it's also very encouraging at this stage of my career to see that a, a research project that was so time-consuming and labour-intensive recognised in this way. Um, on that, I should of course note that first and foremost I'm indebted to the research participants who shared in that labour and did a lot of hard work with their having or skipping breakfast for six weeks. And then, not that I shared in the hard work, but actually the majority of the hard work on a day-to-day -day basis was done by the PhD students and postdocs who, who ran this study. So, um, in particular, Drs. N. H. Chowdhury and Judith Richardson. And then also my colleagues, Professors Dylan Thompson and Jeff Holman, who assisted with a lot of the specialist parts of this study in monitoring energy balance and molecular measurements at a tissue level. And of course, these kind of trials can't go ahead without good infrastructure and research funding. So, my thanks goes to the University of Bath and to the BBSRC for funding the research.